Adrian Ellis, qui est founder and director of Global Cultural District Network, is that it? That is it. Okay, you can take a microphone. Hey, what is a Global Cultural District Network? It is a network of global cultural districts. That is to say that it is a, it's a group yes. of people who are responsible for either um, planning or running um, areas of cities that have concentrations of culture. So that, for example, um, Exhibition Road in that area in London, or um, the Vienna Museums District, or Berlin Museum Island, or um, uh, Brooklyn, where there's a big concentration of, of, of cultural institutions, or Lincoln Center in New York. And uh, the reason is that the, for the network, or the rationale for the network, is that there are so many people uh, considering how best to activate those spaces and make them successful and make them relevant to the cities in which they're located. So you're helping those districts to be to well fulfill known, their potential. To okay, fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, is and it what you you can do also for uh, big companies like uh, or a big uh, like city district like La Défense? Or yeah, not? absolutely. And what one of the interesting things is, although it began as primarily cultural districts, a number of districts like La Défense have joined the network, and I think that the reason for that is that they are interested in the contribution that culture and the arts can make to the animation and uh, identity and vitality of, of, of those districts. What is this contribution? Uh, well, um, first of all, identity. Culture and identity are very closely linked. And many places are incredibly uh, anonymized, if you like, and, and uh, indistinct. So They're commodities, more if you human, like. You so mean. more human, um, uh, more attractive, uh, more livable. Um, they also have impact on the nighttime economy. They are they they attract and retain people, uh, and um, uh, and they offer amenity value that draws people in from elsewhere, not simply to go and work, but to live and to play and to enjoy. Oh, is it one of uh, a kind of uh, revolutionized work? Is that the revolution to feel more comfortable to go to work? Uh, yes, I, I think so. But also, it's it's that um, there, there is a phenomenon that's known as uh, demographic inversion, which is people moving back into uh, da uh, downtown areas or into city areas, and um, uh, 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 and I think it, it's related to that too. I think it's related to people's uh, desire to live and work closer to, to together, and therefore that the amenities that they would expect are therefore often in now mixed-use areas that have have residential as well as uh, uh, leisure, as well as um, retail, as well as work. I think the other thing that's happening, as we all know, is that the character of retail is changing and that retail no longer defines um, uh, downtown areas in quite the way it has historically. And therefore, there are uh, many opportunities for culture to, to create the sort of experiential um, um, uh, experiential character that people increasingly are looking for as, 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 as retail no longer, to the same extent, fulfills that function. When we talk about culture, what do you mean okay. exactly? I'm Is that exhibitions? or? Uh, I, 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 I mean shows? the whole range. Oh. I mean the whole range from, um, from um, uh, uh, exhibitions and visual arts and museums through to performing arts, dance, through to public art, through to the animation of public spaces, through informal performance and things like that. And I, I have just, uh, I've noticed increasingly, for example, over the last decade, that developers, as they are thinking about the character of developments, um, uh, they are increasingly thinking of um, culture as an element in that mix, even if it's even if it itself does not generate positive returns, in other words, culture's a money pit, um, the, uh, the impact on adjacent property values is often more than compensates for the investment that's made. In other words, it's part of the definitional investment uh, in, uh, in, in new areas. But it has to be culture um, like open for everybody or just for people who are employees in this kind no, of district? I, I, or no, not at all. It o has to be more democratic? Yes, I, 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 it, it depends. Um, I mean, c culture... Uh, let's look at some examples. Um, uh, there is a wonderful uh, district in Montreal, the Quartier de Spectacle. Yes. Um, okay. So the Quartier de Spectacle is a... Um, is, in a sense, there are private performance spaces there as well. But the wonderful thing about it is that they have designed into the fabric of the treats, treats, sorry, the streetscape, 
um, uh, the ability to put on informal public concerts, free concerts or paid concerts, or Nuit Blanche or whatever else, uh, that, um, th that mean that as well as it being a business district and as well as it being a residential district, it's a district that people enjoy and it's a, a district where you can have the most fantastic um, uh, experiences. But it's designed in such a way that that doesn't impede or significantly um, adversely affect the ability to conduct business and do other things there. Adrian, Alice, thank you. for uh, You are the foundator and the di director also of uh, uh, Global Cultural Districts Network. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Happy to have you here at the Revolution Network thank you 2017. So much. Et maintenant, c'est Philippe Limantour qui va nous rejoindre.